Good afternoon. For well, today, very special day, and even more special that we are so blessed and honored to welcome Monsignor Mauricio West, a Vicar General of our Diocese of Charlotte, to be here to celebrate the Mass and confirm our children. So let's welcome Monsignor. Welcome. And we also would like to welcome all the confirmation candidates, your families and friends who are here with us this afternoon. So welcome, welcome. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. As we come together, we place ourselves more deeply in God's presence, for there we always find mercy, pardon, and peace. I confess, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have already sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my spiritual fall. Therefore, I express it in all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through, your, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord has commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor in you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. The response is glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths of your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be all of you. The word of the Lord. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. From the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe, has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Please be seated.
The confirmation candidates, please stand. Monsignor West, the parents of St. Joseph Catholic Church presents to you these young men and women who have prepared for and are now ready to receive the sacrament of confirmation. You may be seated, and I promise to be very nice to you on this year Confirmation Day. Today is indeed a very special day, for you are taking on the responsibility of living your faith in a very special way. The apostles who had received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in fulfillment of our Lord's promise to them had power to complete the work of baptism by the giving of the Holy Spirit, as we read in the Acts of the Apostles. When St. Paul laid his hands on certain people who had been baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Even if today, the coming of the Holy Spirit is no longer widely made manifest by the gift of tongues. We know by our faith that the Spirit, through whom the love of God is poured into our hearts, and through whom we are gathered in unity of faith and in diversity of callings, is received by us and is working invisibly to make the Church one and holy. And so, dear Confirmandi, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which you are about to receive, will be a spiritual seal by which you will be confer conformed to Christ and will be made more fully members of his church. For Christ himself, anointed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, he received from John, was sent forth for the work of his ministry to pour out on the earth the fire of that very same spirit. Therefore, you who are already baptized will now receive the power of his spirit and will be signed with his cross on your foreheads. And so you must always bear witness to the passion and resurrection of Jesus Christ before the world. Your manner of life, as the apostle tells us all, must be in every place the pleasing fragrance of Christ. His mystical body, which is the church, the people of God, receive from him diverse graces, which the same Holy Spirit distributes to individuals for the building up of the church in unity and love. And so, dear young people who will be confirmed today, be living members of the church of Jesus Christ. Therefore, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, seek to serve all people as Christ did, who came to serve not to be served. And now, before you receive the Spirit, I ask you to call to mind the faith which you professed in baptism or which your parents and godparents professed with the Church. And so, Confirmandi, I ask you now to stand. I'm going to ask you to renew your baptismal vow. And of course, as they renew their baptismal vows, this provides an excellent opportunity for the entire church to renew your baptismal vows. They need the witness of your faith. They need the strong support of your prayers. So as they renew the baptismal vows, you renew yours as well. Open your lives more completely to Christ allow the Holy Spirit
to bring to completion the good work that he has begun in each one of you. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your sons and daughters, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Peter. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Let us now place our needs before the Lord, who always hears and answers our prayers. For the Christian Church, that the divisions which plague us from within and separate us from one another may be healed according to the model of Trinitarian unity. This we ask praying. We pray in our prayer. For our president and civil leaders, that God's plan for the unity of mankind be present in their work and concern for the common good. This we ask praying. For all who, by race or poverty, are trapped in our tortured cities, that God grant them hope and the strength to overcome. This we ask praying. For our community, that it always sees its duty to extend the hand of friendship to all who are lonely and depressed. This we ask praying. For a new spirit and a new heart in each of us, that our lives may be a celebration of Christ's new commandment of love. This we ask praying. Lord, O oh God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and will that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess your resurrection and save them again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember the Lord your Jesus Christ for the world, and bring glory to the fullness of charity, together with Francis Hope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All have died in your wounds. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Martha of God, St. Joseph, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you through our ages, we may hear to speak your answer to the mind, and may praise the Lord for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him. And with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
unto the Lord our God. Bring us health of body and soul, as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. What a beautiful day. Did you see the Holy Spirit descending? Yeah, I saw the Holy Spirit. It's beautiful. Laying on each one of you. So now we're going to ask uh, every one of you in the, this confirmation class, please stand. Let us now congratulations for the confirmation class. Lord, I am the 